Happy Method Mondays, everybody. I'm Robbie from IELTS Coach Pro, and today we are looking at the IELTS reading question types called short answer and sentence completion. The reason we're doing two today is that both of these are very similar, so all the same principles and strategies will be used for sentence completion and short answer questions in IELTS reading. Before we get into the method, I would like you to write in the comments what you think a European bee eater is. Because when I saw the title of this article, I had something in mind, and then what it actually was was something very different. So type in the comments what do you think a European bee eater is, okay? The article that we are going to be looking at today is about the European bee eater. And most of the questions we'll be looking at will be sentence completion, which means fill in the blank. Um, so they'll give you a sentence and there will be one or two or three words missing. And you will need to write those words in the blank, uh, but especially write them on your answer sheet. Okay, so the life of a European bee eater. When I saw this, I thought maybe a European bee eater is like some savage Vikings from Northern Europe that survived by eating only bees, um, but it's actually this, <laughs> this cute little bird. Um, but if you were a bee, you would not think he is so cute. Uh, let's get into the method here. The first thing you want to do with any IELTS question type is read the instruction. So here we have the instructions, write no more than two words from the passage for each answer. So when it says no more than two words, that means you can write one word, that's fine. You can write two words, that's fine. But you cannot write three words, you cannot write four, five, six, seven, ten, you cannot write more than two words. Two words is fine, three words is not fine. Um, also a number is not fine in these. Sometimes in IELTS questions you will see one word and or a number. But this one just says no more than two words, so we will not be writing numbers, we will not be writing more than two words. All of our answers will be either one word or two words, okay? So that's important with these. Sometimes people, even very experienced IELTS takers, will get questions wrong because they wrote too many words. If you write too many words in your answer, the question is automatically wrong. So always be very careful to follow the instructions. The next thing we want to do when we look at these is practice our guessing skills. So there's a few different question types in IELTS where you have to write an answer from scratch. It's not like multiple choice or matching where you can choose from a list. So notes completion, summary completion, um, sentence completion, uh, table completion, flow chart completion, and short answer questions are all question types where you will be writing one word, two words, three words, and or a number. Uh, but all of these question types give you a chance to practice your guessing skills, also known as prediction. And this is a very helpful skill in life as normal people listen to English or read English. Their brain already knows what's coming because the more you do it, the more you just predict based on the grammar or based on the topic. And this skill is also really helpful in IELTS because it gets your brain honed in on exactly what the answer is gonna be. Not exactly, I guess, but it gives you a general idea of what the answer could be. And then when you find the exact answer, your brain is ready for it. So let's try some prediction with these questions one, two, and three about the European bee eater. Um, you don't always have to predict an answer when you're actually giving the IELTS. Every person has a little bit of a different strategy. Um,
but when you're practicing, it's a good thing to do, to predict. And on some of your mock tests, sometimes try predicting first and then searching for your answer. Uh, sometimes try without predicting and see which one is better for you. Uh, but generally, people do better if they just take a moment to try to predict an answer. And so our predictions are not going to be the exact correct answer, but they will help us know generally what the answer might be. So number one, bee eaters prey are bees and other dash. So what kind of words could go in that blank? Is it a noun, adjective, adverb? So if you're thinking noun, you would be correct. Bees and other, so bees is a noun. So whatever goes in the dash is also going to be a noun. Um, do you think it's gonna be a singular noun or a plural noun? So one thing or more than one thing? It's probably going to be a plural noun because bees is plural, it's more than one bee. And so bees and other, somethings, probably it'll have an S on it, but some plural nouns do not have an S at the end. It will also probably be closely related to bees. So maybe bees and other animals or bees and other flying creatures. So. The only goal in prediction is to try to think of an answer that could be correct, that could fit the sentence. You're not actually trying to guess or predict the real correct answer. <laughs> You're going to have to look at the passage for that. So uh, maybe if I was predicting number one, I would say bee eaters prey are bees and other flying creatures. So it's less than two words. It makes sense in the sentence, but it's not the correct answer. Uh, maybe for this one, you could even predict the correct answer. It is possible sometimes, but obviously you never want to count on that. It's always important to look at the passage and find your answers. So if we were to predict for number two, it says bee eaters need to remove the dash from bees before eating them. Hmm. This one, it's probably going to be another noun. Bee eaters need to remove the something. If I were predicting this, like what could be in a bee that you would need to remove? I would say stinger. Um, again, that's not the correct answer, um, but it kind of makes sense to me. Bee eaters need to remove the stinger from bees before eating them. Uh, maybe you had a different word. I'm curious what maybe you would predict for these one, two, and three. So definitely pop those in the comments. Um, and then the last one, number three, there is plenty of food for bee eaters on agricultural land in blank. So again, this is probably going to be a noun. Agricultural land and in blank. So like agricultural land is a location, this is probably also going to be a location because we have the word in. Um, it's probably going to be a place somewhere where there's plenty of food on agricultural land and in jungles, I don't know. So I'm curious what your predictions are, but again, this just gets our mind flowing in the right direction. Um, it's good practice. It really helps your uh, skills of knowing what to expect. And if you know what to expect when you're looking for the answers, um, you're gonna have less stress and you're gonna have higher chances of getting the correct answers. But we did prediction practice for all three of these. Normally, we wouldn't look at all the questions at once. That was just for your prediction skill practice. 
if we were really doing this in IELTS, we would look at number one first, find it, answer it, and then move on to number two. So let's do that now with some tips and instructions along the way. So number one, bee eaters prey are bees and other blank. So again, my prediction for this was maybe bees and other flying creatures, but now it's time to look over at the passage. And so this passage is called The Life of the European Bee Eater. It's always good to look at the title and read the first sentence entirely so you get a nice overview of what the passage is about. So I would do that. A brilliant movement of colors as it catches its food in the air. The European bee eater moves between three continents. So even if I didn't have a picture, I would probably know that this is a bird. So that would just help me get the context of the passage um, because it catches its food in the air. So reading that first sentence is always helpful. We don't read every word of the passage with questions like this. So this is one of the easier question types in IELTS reading. It's not that easy, but it is easier than things like matching information and matching headings. One thing that is helpful with these is they will always be in order. So it's a good time to use our keyword choosing skills and our scanning and finding skills. So um, after we've read the topic sentence, let us read our question again. Bee eaters prey are bees and other. So if you haven't seen our video on choosing keywords, I encourage you to check that out. It's very helpful for all IELTS question types. There'll be a link to that in the description. Um, but if I were Looking at number one, I would choose prey and bees as my keywords. Um, I wouldn't choose bee eaters because the entire passage is about bee eaters. So prey and bees kind of help make this question unique. So because they are in order, I can start scanning at the top looking for something um, referring to prey and bees. Um, true to their name, bee eaters eat bees, okay? Though their diet includes just about any flying insect. So that looks like a good option to maybe be my answer. Bee eaters prey are bees and other um, bee eaters eat bees, though their diet includes just about any flying insect. Yeah, bee eaters prey are bees and other flying insect. So it's not quite correct, and I will tell you why. This is very important in all of the question types where you have to write out your own answer, like notes completion, sentence completion, which is what we're doing here. If I wrote flying insect on my answer sheet for number one, I would be marked wrong because the grammar's wrong. So it's very important for these IELTS question types, your spelling has to be perfect, which is pretty easy in reading because all the words are in the passage, but your grammar also has to be perfect. And this can be a little tricky. Um, you might not be able to just copy the words that you found in the passage. You have to make sure that they match the grammar in the question. So if you were to write the word flying insect in that blank for number one, it would be a grammar error. Bee eaters prey are bees and other flying insect is wrong grammar, um, bees and other flying insects with an S on the end. Um, it would look like this. So if you wrote insects for your answer, that would be fine. 
flying insects is a little bit more specific. So sometimes in IELTS, there's more than one possible correct answer, but when they say write no more than two words, I usually write, I usually like to write both of the important words. So flying insect, flying insects with an S uh, feels like more of a specific answer to me. So I feel like that is a little bit better. But if you wrote insects without flying, it would be correct as long as you have the S on the end. If you write insect without an S, you would get the entire question marked wrong uh, because your grammar is wrong. This is where our prediction skills are really helpful because if you remember when we were predicting for number one, I already knew that it was going to be a plural noun. So if I did some good predicting beforehand, then I would be already in the mood to give a plural answer. And so that's why predicting can be so helpful um, another thing that's a little bit weird, I'll skip to this, okay? So, sorry, I jumped to a completely different passage, but I wanted to show you short answer questions will have similar rules. So, um, these are short answer questions here, and it says write no more than two words, so it's the same instructions the same rules, but there's no blanks. And so if we look at number six, that first one says, whose writing improves as a result of feedback received from readers? Sometimes people get a little confused because your grammar also needs to be perfect in short answer questions. But it's a little bit weird because <laughs> Um, how can you have grammar in a two-word answer to a question? It sounds a little weird, um, but you can, and you must have the correct grammar. So question number six here says, whose writing improves as a result of feedback received from readers? If you were to give a one or two-word answer to that question, Whose writing improves as a result of feedback received from readers? And you said blogger? That's a grammar error because that is not a very natural answer to that question. And so the proper answer to number six again is bloggers with an S. So you have to be careful when you're answering questions that your answer follows the grammar that was in the question. And you might need to practice the specific grammar of how to answer questions. If you've ever studied a grammar book, um, lots of times they will teach you how to give statements. They will also teach you how to ask questions but they will also teach you how to answer questions in a short way with natural grammar. It feels a little bit weird in your second language, but you probably do it all the time in your first language. You don't always give full sentences. Um, sometimes you respond with just one or two word answers to questions, but when you do, there are certain forms of words that you use certain forms that make sense and sound natural because they're the correct grammar. In your first language, you probably do it without knowing it. In English, it takes a little more focus. So with short answer and with fill in the blank questions, you need to have perfect grammar and spelling. And the last thing that I would like to say about these, this is not a question type where we have a really fancy special method. Um, but you do need to have a good understanding of words and sentences. You need to have a good vocabulary um, because as we know in IELTS, they're going to phrase the question one way and then they're going to phrase the same information differently in the reading passage. So you need to know synonyms for these words and you need to understand 
uh, what it looks like when they rewrite the same information using different words. And so if you're good at understanding paraphrasing and your reading comprehension skills are good, um, you're really going to knock this one out of the park as long as you pay special attention to the spelling and the grammar. Um, if you struggle with these, it's probably a sign that your sentence comprehension is not very strong. And that's okay because you can improve. So we've added <clears throat> but that's okay because this is a great chance for you to improve your reading comprehension skills. So we've added a couple links to some nice resources. Um, if you go to these resources, no matter what level you're at in reading, you can either download an app or go to a website and you can improve your reading skills. Um, but to really improve your reading comprehension skills, you need to read every day. And so at least 15 minutes a day, 30 minutes is even better, but read in English and try to improve your reading speed and also make sure you're understanding the sentences that you read. If there are certain words that you don't understand, uh, write them down and look them up in a dictionary and practice using some new words as well. So that is all that we have today. If you liked this video, please click like and share it, subscribe, and follow. And if you want more help with your IELTS, especially if you want to go through this whole reading passage that we have today, um, we just looked at one question, but, but there are eight of these fill-in-the-blank sentence completion questions that we will guide you through. Go to our website at www.ieltscoachpro.com. We also have live group classes, one-on-one -on -one tutoring, writing feedback, practice activities. So all kinds of good stuff is over there at IELTSCoachPro.com. Uh, but until next time, have a great day. All the best with IELTS. Peace out.